Robbie Bosco. Generally, we introduce Blaine Fowler as that way. But, but it's, it's nice <laughs> we, to have, we have Robbie the Bosco. Starter. Yeah, yeah. yeah the starter. It's good to be here. It's good to be with you guys. Well, we're happy to have you, and, and uh, we're remembering Lavelle for obvious reasons because of uh, his legacy, and it's been fun to see the different billboards and signs and tweets and emails and all of these things coming in uh, to show appreciation for Coach Edwards. What kind of an impact did he have on you in your life, Robbie? Oh, it's amazing. You know, when I came here as a freshman, I was kind of like a homebody, so I, I didn't really want to go away to school. I wanted to kind of stay close so my parents could always be there, and I could be close to, to go home every once in a while. And um, once Lavelle came to my house on that recruiting visit, you know, I knew this was a place I wanted to be just because of his, the way he was, his demeanor, the way he was around my parents, the way he treated me. And uh, he seemed a little unusual. He didn't seem like one of those crazy rah-rah coaches. And he had a little bit of family values in him that uh, I just loved. And then once I got here, there were times where I wanted to go home. Uh, there were times where I didn't think this was the right place for me, but he, um, he just kind of had that magic about him that knew that you were going to be somebody and be something that to be proud of. His uh, stoic nature on the sideline is famous, right? But he was incredibly personable, kind of away from that situation. Give us an idea of kind of his demeanor uh, when, say, he recruited you. Well, I, I can remember one time he came into my house and we had one of those uh, pedal bikes that you'd go. And nowadays you can pedal as fast as you want and then kind of stop your feet and the wheel keep going. Well, this one was so old that once you got it going, the pedals only stopped when the bike stopped. <laughs> so he got, for I don't know what reason why he did though, but he got on that bike and was pedaling as fast as he could. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, bam, his legs go straight sideways because he couldn't stop it. And that, he had to stay up there for five more minutes because that pedal just kept going and going and going. And, you know, it always used to bug me when people used to talk about that stoic, his arms folded, didn't do much on the sidelines because he did so much for the players and for the coaching staff and, and for everybody that uh, his personality is, is much better than that. I've been on some cruises with him. And he was always the, the kind of the big show. He could put like 10 to 12 spoons on his face. <laughs> and he would just sit there and he'd have all these spoons on his face. The what way, in the world? The way his cheeks were kind of soft and pudgy, <laughs> he could just put them on there and they would just stick to him. I've never seen anybody else do that. He's amazing. <laughs> Stupid human tricks with LaBelle. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Jerem and I have been jealous of all the people that have said, we went on vacation with LaBelle. It's like, oh, man, that would be fantastic to go on vacation uh, with the those, great coach. Those were famous, and they were like quarterback cruises. Right, yeah, and stuff. yeah, quarterback cruises. And uh, we probably went on about three or four in a row, and it kind of faded away. But those are some of the great memories, you know, going, doing, going on vacation with them where it's totally relaxing. Don't even talk about football, hardly. And uh, those are just a lot of fun. What has uh, been your reaction to the overwhelming response that Lavelle has received after the news of his passing? What have you observed uh, among your teammates and colleagues and coaches and all of that? Well, one of the things we have, I have a, um, I have a little, the former athletes, I have a lot of emails that I send out and do we do periodically, we do some things. And we have reunions and guys come to games and stuff like that, but it's not that you know, big a response. And so I sent out um, kind of the outlay of what's going to happen this weekend. So Friday at 6, we're going to have the memorial. Then at 8 o'clock, we're going to have the player reunion. And we are up to 400 people. Whoa. And those are the only ones that they get the emails from me. There's many out there that don't. So we're trying to – the venue is the Cougar Room – which right now is, feels like it's going to be shoulder to shoulder. And so it's the, the, the response is unbelievable. And those that can't make it are saying, please tell them that we could, we'd love to be there, but we can't. So he, um, we have players that want to be there that he wasn't even their coach. But just, the, um, just what he meant to everybody, what he meant to the school, is people want to be a part of it. This is a loaded question, but uh, what are some of your favorite memories from playing for Lavelle Edwards? Um, you know, there's a couple stories. One, we were 
if you can remember uh, Ty Detmer's, I can't remember what year it was, we were playing Texas A&M in the Holiday Bowl, uh -huh. where they were just killing us. Yeah. They were up by 40, and then late in the fourth quarter, double reverse passes. And uh, first time I've ever seen Lavelle go after somebody. He was mad. He ran across that field and laid into that head coach. R.C. Slocum. It wasn't Slocum. It used to be the coach. I think that coach went on to coach UCLA. Oh. I can't remember his name right now. And so, you know, every once in a while, that love just grows more and more uh, for a coach when, when you see that kind of stuff. Because it was kind of a – it just was kind of a classless thing that they did. And uh, so that was, that was one of the things that, I guess it wasn't a great thing, but it was kind of a fun thing for the players to see him to be like that. Um, the other things are just, you know, I have so many of them that are, they're hard to imagine, but he was, uh, I remember the first game I played against University of Pittsburgh of that magical 84 season. And my first three passes were horrendous. I mean, it was like, do I really belong out here? They were that <laughs> bad of throws. And as I was walking off the sideline, my head kind of hung down. I see Lavelle starting to walk towards me. I'm like, I've never seen a coach come out on the field to tell a guy to, you're done. You can't play. And so we met together. I'm like, oh, here we go. But he put his arm around me, and he told me, hey, you, we, we've seen what you can do. Don't worry about what's happened. Go out there and play, and we know you can do it. We have total confidence in you. And just that alone made me feel like, okay, I'm ready to go. Let's go out there and get it done. So he had that kind of, um, he had that thing about him that he, each individual person, he knew how to trigger. and He, he knew how to motivate, and that's kind of what was special about him. Meanwhile, Blaine Fowler is over your shoulder like, are you sure, Coach? Because my right <laughs> arm is feeling great right now. Yeah, I'm feeling good right Did now. you see Let's that go. pass, Kyle's last game? <laughs> Robbie Bosco with us on BYU Sports Nation, uh, commemorating and celebrating the life of Lavelle Edwards. I love that story. Uh, I've heard you tell that story before uh, from Pittsburgh. But I really appreciate uh, the story from the Texas A&M game because I didn't know that. Um, and it's, it's great to see and hear about Lavelle Edwards sticking up for his team. And Ty Detmer separated both of his shoulders yeah. in that game. And so, yeah, that uh, it just makes you love him all the more. It's hard to put into context what he meant to everyone off the field. But I've heard synonymous memories from several different players about Lavelle being able to see a better version of myself than even I could. And... Um, him being able to make me feel better about uh, hopeless situations. Um, how did he impact your life that way off of the field? I think he impacted my, my life as he did many others. Um, we had, there were a lot of situations that kids could have got kicked off the team. The kids could have got um, kicked out of BYU for whatever reason. But he saw something more in him. And he told me many times, I, I'm not so concerned about how my former players played. I love seeing what they did with their life afterwards. And he had that special feeling in him that he could see that these guys are going to be great people. It's not about throwing touchdowns and running touchdowns and making tackles. It's about what are they going to do after their life. And so he worked with all of his players. If they, you've heard McMahon talk about all the times that he was in his office, and they kind of jest about it, but he knew McMahon was going to be a great person and a great player, not only a great player, but a great person after his football career. And Jim really has turned out about that. He's got a great heart, and, and you can see that in him when you're around him. And Lavelle could feel that. And it wasn't about we need Jim to win championships. But we need Jim to be here so he can be a better person. Mm. Mike Gempy told us when he interacted as a coach with Lavelle Edwards, he, he loved it because Shirley would have this yellow notepad and there would be 10 to 15 minutes worth of agenda items. And then the next 45 minutes of the staff meeting at 8 were just stories. <laughs> as, as a longtime coach with BYU, what kind of interaction and, and fun stories do you have from Um You know, Lavelle always, he was always quick-witted. Some of, my, some of my favorite stories is interviews with him. You go in there and you sit in his chair, which was a football chair. It was a football helmet, and you sat in that chair. Where, where are, where'd those go? Those are, 
It's actually in his backyard. Really? That, that chair is in his backyard. <laughs> so we need to bring that out. We need to put that in studio. Oh, that would be awesome. My that goodness. would be great to have. That's a relic. But his interviews were not normal. He would be interviewing you while reading the newspaper. <laughs> and he would be reading that newspaper in conversation. And then when he was done doing that, he'd bend down and start shining his shoes. Then he'd take his key and he'd start picking wax out of his ear. <laughs> I mean, he did this. You could talk to multiple players, and they would tell you these same stories. But he would, he would just do these, and it was as if he was your best friend. He knew exactly the conversation, what was going on, and um, it, it was just fun to be around. Uh, he, um, he created a lot of great coaches. There were a lot of great coaches that moved on to be head coaches at other places um, that were just tremendous people. And then he was friends with everybody. I guess my favorite stories of all time, I think people kind of took him for granted here. And, you know, he was great and everything. But when I went, on, when I went places with him out of state, it was get out of his way. Here comes the Beatles. He's a rock star. He was a rock star. I, I, I was almost shocked at the people that waited in line to be able just to be around Lavelle Edwards. And these were famous people now. These were big-time people, big-time coaches and fans, and they just revered him. And he meant a lot, you know, to the whole country, really. Man, the sign of a great leader is the ability to uh, take every individual and coach them how they need to be coached, and not just at football, but in life. And, uh, again, it's another one of those stories that you share and things that you said that have been said by Steve Young and Ty Detmer and Tom Homo and Trevor Maddich, and the list goes on. What do you uh, anticipate his funeral service will be like? Uh, I hope it's a happy one, and I think it will be. Um, you know, the one thing that is very interesting about his, uh, his, his funeral and the memorial and everything that's going to go on is that he, his wife will be there. And when you talk about LaBelle Edwards, you talk about Patty Edwards. And uh, I think it'll be a very emotional thing because I think it, it's, it's, gone, it's gone further beyond what we, what we know him as. My son served, in our, uh, served a mission in Argentina. And Colton Cronister was a companion of his. And Colton's father, Mike Cronister, played football as a wide receiver. I think it was a few years before me. And they would often spend, when they were companions, they would often tell stories about, we're here, we're possibly here because of, the, the, uh, of what Lavelle did to our dads. Wow. And Mike, Con Mike Cronister had kind of a rough time here. And, and Lavelle worked with Mike a lot of years and talking to him. And, 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 and it wasn't so much talking about the gospel. It was just being a friend and being a good example. And that's what Lavelle was more than anybody was a good example. So when they're in Argentina, walking the roads, walking the streets of Argentina, talking about Lavelle Edwards, this is a generation past all of us. And I imagine, and I can envision, the next generation that our kids are gonna have will be talking about Lavelle Edwards and the impact that he had on their dads, on their grandpas, and, and onward. Generations upon generations, right? That uh, the type of impact that Lavelle Edwards is having right now and uh, has had in the past. Robbie, we uh, we thank you for the time. This has been uh, a lot of fun and uh, very enjoyable for us to reflect on that. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rob. It's great to be here. Always fun to talk about Lavelle.